Scheduled in Zendesk. Hi there, customer experience community. This is Dominic. Welcome to another video. If you haven't already, I've gotten the new camera and hopefully this is going to improve your experience. I'm always trying to keep my word and not just to talk about improving customer experiences, but also actually living that expectation. So part of the delivering better customer experience is also offering you a better experience as the viewer. I don't know how this is going to look and feel, but hopefully it's going to improve. Today we're going to talk about schedules in Zendesk. Schedules in Zendesk are a way for you to define business hours. So when are you in the office? What time zone are you using? Where are your agents located? Step number one is going to be preparation. So as a rule of thumb, you don't go in to set up anything before you talk about it, you document it. The important questions to answer are going to be, where is my team located? What time zone are they based? And what are my business requirements? This is the number one thing. Now, after you've discovered your business needs and you've talked to your teams to make sure you know where everyone is located and what times you're supporting and what your SLAs are to your customer. If you have a BPO and you've outsourced your customer service team, then it doesn't really matter because you're offering 24 seven. So you don't necessarily need to create a schedule. In this case, you can just use calendar hours, but we'll get to the technical side in just a bit. Point number two for schedules is going to be the best practices. Now in your business, you have an SLA with your customers so a service level agreement or a contract that uh, makes you accountable for you to get back to them within a certain amount of time. So if you promise your customers that you're offering them support from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. and your business is based in the U.S., then you have to cover that uh, interval. If you have another side of your business that is covering Europe, you have to adapt to the schedule in Europe. So in Zendesk, you have calendar hours and you have business hours. Business hours is what is covered by schedules. As a best practice, all for broadly applicable schedules to avoid having to do too much maintenance. Schedules in Zendesk are a way for you to define working days versus non-working days. Exact work hours are not important. You can cover that with a different tool and I'll talk about it in just a second. As a, another best practice, evaluate the needs of every individual team. So don't go around setting schedules for people without talking to them in advance. There might be a person that doesn't like a schedule you set for them and they would rather take the European shift instead of the US shift. A customer experience best practice, which I'm just going to slip in here, is to have good communication. Just be very direct and open to what you're trying to achieve. I know that's hard and good communication is very hard, but you have to do that right. Another best practice for schedules is to set a trigger for out of office hours. If you're offering support from nine to six, then you have to set up a business rule a trigger in this case to say, okay, if you reached out at 8 p.m., we're outside of our normal schedule and we'll get back to you within this uh, interval. Very good best practice for your customers to set the right expectations. Now, if you offer support in multiple time zones, then you have to set a business rule for each time zone and for each schedule. So as tickets come in for North America, you set up a trigger to set up the availability for North America and outside of business hours and inside of business hours for North America. Then for Europe, you set up a trigger with out of office for business hours when you activate in the European time zone and when you're not available in the European time zone and so on and so forth for the other regions for, you know, APAC and so on. Another best practice here is to set up a trigger to assign the schedules. How do you do this right? Well, to make it easy for you, you have to have a support email for North America and a support email for Europe. Obviously, this applies to other regions as well. Now, if you have these emails separated with time zones, it's easy because if a ticket comes in to this email address, then you lock in a schedule for whichever that email is addressed to. So email comes in for US support, requesting US support, you apply the US schedule, same thing. Uh, for European time zone. So that's it. That's very good because now you can create out of office triggers like the step earlier. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a word from our sponsor and you're never going to guess. It's us. Duh. <laughs> if you want to use a Zendesk consultant's 10,000 hours to make sure you're getting the most out of your Zendesk, if you want to have simplified processes, if you want to make sure your team is productive, you want to make sure that your customers are getting the best customer experience, show management that you made the right choice with Zendesk, automate as much as possible to free up time for you, then hop on over to roca.work 
slash offers and we'll ask you for your team size, we'll ask you for what kind of service you need and then you leave your name and email and we'll give you a ballpark. Now based on this estimate we'll be able to see how our services best fit your needs and if we are a good fit let's start optimizing your Zendesk. We do this in three phases. First is we optimize Zendesk to make sure you're getting the most out of it. Second is we apply best practices in your niche and third we focus selling more of your service or product. Now again go to roca.work slash offers get a ballpark and let's get the conversation there and let's start optimizing. I'll see you later. Bye. Now step number three in schedules it's configuration. For configuration I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you where it is. So we go to admin center. In admin center we go to objects and rules and we scroll down to schedules and as you can see I have a bunch of schedules set up so I have one for Central Europe, I have one for GMT, I have a Bucharest one, I have a German one, I have a Peru schedule and just easy as uh, adding a new schedule, add it, add your time zone, uh, Central, okay Central America you know, and I see my availabilities. This is very easy. Drag and drop. I just make. I just uh, drag it and uh, and uh, yeah, create it like this. So uh, it's very easy, very straightforward. This one is very fun to do. Now, what you have to do is to define the holidays. This is very good. You have to define your holidays because each country is different and each territory is different. It has a national holiday, and you have to define that. When is that national holiday? You have to make sure that you set this up right and where it's ha when it's happening so obviously Christmas you know it let's go to December see it's it's on a Monday so you make sure that uh, you're setting a free time for them and it ends when it ends on the 27th that's when everybody's going to be back in the office now save this up you have to set a trigger for out of office when you have holidays. So holiday is a different metric in your trigger. So you have to have one for out of office and you have to have one for holiday season. Holiday season doesn't matter if it's Christmas, if it's uh, Thanksgiving, if it's, uh, I don't know, Easter, whatever it is, it's, you know, it is what it is. So you have to put it in there as a holiday. Okay, point number four is going to be conclusions. So as a conclusion, make sure you set up your schedule, have a good discussion with your team, and not before you define your business requirements. Don't forget to do that. And now, as a best practice, which I'm saving for last, I am going to give advice to use time shift from Zendesk. So I'm going to make the logo appear somewhere on the screen. So time shift is an addition from Zendesk, which is a workforce management tool, which is natively integrated with Zendesk. So this is a startup that Zendesk bought, it's a very recent acquisition and we have a video about how it works somewhere or link it up top somewhere. Now this add-on is amazing for Zendesk and the reason why is because you can cover your gaps. So whenever there is an, uh, say a small gap or a gap in your support system, you'll be able to notice it and anticipate it in time and you'll make sure to prepare for it. Meaning that if you have uh, you know, a spike in your support during, uh, let's say, 2 a.m. in the morning, you need to assign somebody to, you know, maybe two people or three people to take care of that, not just one person who is usually doing the night shift. You might have spikes during your busy season, which depends on your niche and where you activate it and what that is for you. What this tool does is it analyzes data for two years back in your Zenesk and it sees where you have spikes. So for Black Friday, for obviously Christmas or Valentine's Day, depends when you have your promotions and uh, people are buying most from you and it is able to predict that for you and to form a plan and you can cover that gap by maybe employing some additional people to help you during this busy season and that's it. You don't have to hire them internally. You keep them for three weeks a month and you cover your yourself and uh, your recent campaign spike. Okay, this has been the video for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this camera is looking good. Please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Only about 9% of you are uh, subscribed to this YouTube channel. So go on, please subscribe. It will help a lot the YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.